everybody and welcome back to our Google Classroom uh, course. I'm really excited about this particular lesson because we've learned the basics of Google Classroom, but I want to show you how we can put some things in the Google Classroom that are interactive and fun using the Google Apps. Often we think of the Google Apps as their basic performance, and that's for word processing, data collection, or slide share. But really what we can do is we can make some interactives. Now you've seen in previous lessons how we took Google Docs and transformed them into HyperDocs, but now I want to show you how we can use Google Drawings and Google Slides to create interactive manipulatives and then assign them to the students in the classroom so that we can see their process of learning. And so the first thing you need to know is it's three very easy steps that if you don't feel like you want to make your own yet, there's hundreds of templates I'm about to show you and give you access to. And also just know that it takes a little bit of time and creativity to take something that maybe was just a paper assignment and how can we bring it to life for the students. When we can assign these manipulatives digitally, the students can actually even practice this at home with their families or use the materials over and over and over again without having those pieces lost and those Ziploc bags that takes forever for us to make at home. So we're going to give this a try. Just know that everything I'm showing you can be done in both Google Slides or Google Drawings in the exact same way. People will ask me, why do you use one or the other for manipulatives? And really, it just depends. Do I want to have one place for them to work, one page? I choose Google Drawings. If I want multiple pages, then I go ahead and I use Google Slides. Just like that collaborative slides activity we did before this. So I'm going to invite you to look at some of these examples to get an idea of what do I mean by manipulatives? And then I'm going to show you how I created it. So one of the things we have here is some Google support resources that have been attached below for you. But you can see that we have all kinds of things like 10 frames, um, shape sorters, word sorters, animal research, life cycles, uh, tanagrams, word poetry, you name it. These have all been created templates for you to be able to take and use. Created by here, us at MTech, the amazing people at Black Gold, Alice Keeler, Eric Kurtz, Christine Pinto, and more. And so you can see here, we have something like a tanagram, where students are able to take the pieces and learn how to be able to rotate them and manipulate them and put them onto their particular drawings. Here we have some magnetic poetry where we can go ahead and have kids be able to work on different pieces of poetry. Butterfly life cycle where students are dragging and dropping manipulatives to put them where they go. This one is going to be creating word families and words to be able to practice their literacy skills. We have some place value mats for students to be able to work with. This one is a school bus problem taken from the Math Makes Sense programs where we took the question and we created manipulatives for the students to be able to learn skip counting. They can be able to drag and duplicate these shapes. This one is from uh, one of our math, early years math assessments where we have a farmer's brown activity. The students are able to drag over the different sheep, pigs and cows and put them in the appropriate pens to find out all the different ways they can do that. And I've also attached for you the instructions again, step by step, of how to be able to make these manipulatives with some complete GIFs, as well as a whole bunch of examples of manipulatives for you using the Google Slides for different math activities of all across the different grade levels. So, how did I make these? Well, it is actually very simple. And what we're doing is we're simply inserting images and we're duplicating images. Do you remember when we first had smart boards in our classrooms and we had that infinite cloner? This is sort of a cheat for us to be able to do that. So I'm gonna show you how to be able to create your own and then how do we take these templates and distribute them to our students? So the first thing you need to know is open up a new Google Drawing. If you want to do this as a student, you could create from classroom, but what you're going to do is go to drawings.google.com and you're going to get a blank canvas. You could also do this from slides, slides.google.com and have a blank presentation. All right, now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a shape. I'm just going to start with the basic circle. You can, of course, create your manipulatives to be any color you want, any border that you want, any size of border weight you want. Once you have the manipulative you want to be able to create, you're going to select it. 
To duplicate it, you're going to hit Control D as many times as you want to duplicate it. Now we need to get these into a stack. So we take our mouse to the outer left corner and we're going to select all of those manipulatives and we're going to right click in the middle of the stack and we're going to align horizontally in the center. We're going to right click and we're going to align vertically in the middle. Now before I click anywhere else with this all still highlighted, I'm going to drag it to where I want, perhaps even off the page. Now when the students drag on this, you can see that it looks like virtual manipulatives. Now I can also do this with images. I can go ahead and search the web. Perhaps my student really wants to do some minion math. Now your little trick is I like to search for things that are PNG. What that means is an image with a transparent background because I don't want to have a rectangular view around my image. I'm going to come here and I'm going to find the image that I want and I'm going to insert it. It's way too big. I'm going to resize that. I'm just going to drag from the corners to be able to resize my image. That's right. Now exact same thing, control D. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to right click in the middle of that stack. I'm going to align horizontally in the center. I'm going to align vertically in the middle and I'm going to place them where I want. That's it. That's the magic. That's how easy it is. So when I'm making magnetic poetry, when I'm making, um, you know, leaf graphing, you name it for students, I'm simply creating an image that I've duplicated that they can move around. And we have some really great templates for chess, checkers, battleship, all kinds of different interactives to really support student thinking and numeracy, as well as we have scientific diagrams and literacy activities. And so I challenge you to not only try creating a manipulative of your own, but also to be able to look through the hundreds of templates that we have and be able to choose one that you can take and use as is, or perhaps be able to um, adjust the manipulatives to suit your grade level and subject area. But now, how would this look if I was to put it in the Google Classroom? Well, it's very simple. I'm going to go to my new Google Classroom. I'm going to go to Classwork, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to create my assignment. Now that I've created the assignment, I'm going to go ahead and go to my Google Drive, and I'm going to select the manipulatives I want to be able to give to the students. Instead of students being able to view the file, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy for each student, and I'm going to assign it. What's now fantastic, as we learned in previous lessons, I can use revision history to see how long did the student work from it? How did they move things around? How did they interact with the assignment? All of those different pieces and still allow me to be able to have it be fun and hands-on for the students without me having to cut up a lot of materials. So give it a try. I want you to be able to make your own manipulatives and try looking through those different templates and assign it to your students so that they can have some interactive fun as well. Also, if you create a great template, please share it so we can share it with all of ECSD. Just share it with me in the Google Drive via my email, trisha.rofi at ecsd.net.